Hello everyone and welcome back to Candid Coffee. I'm very happy to have Edith Alavertian. She is an author and psychotherapist and she works here in the Los Angeles area helping patients with their mental health needs. Thank you so much for inviting me to your home today. Thank you for having me and thank you for coming. Um, it's very nice to finally um, do an episode um, and especially during this quarantine it feels really just awesome to be around someone who I can talk to and educate our viewers and help them and give them some perspective and advice uh, mm -hmm. from you as a professional. Um, please tell me about um, a little bit about, about your background and where you're currently uh, working as a professional. Sure. So I started actually very young. I was always very into human brain and conversations and trying to really understand the deep world of individuals. And so I thought, well, why not get into psychology? So I attended school, graduated, and um, I started thinking about publishing my own book because mm -hmm. um, I think as psychotherapists, it's very important that we do research and publish. So I thought of journaling because I am working with a lot of um, Armenian mothers who are struggling with um, several mental health dilemmas. Mm -hmm. And I actually found out that journaling really helps you identify your thoughts and needs and puts you in a better place because it just provides you with a safe space to be yourself. Mm -hmm. So I started creating um, prompts and I published my journal last year, I believe of October. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I became an author and uh, currently I'm working at New You Therapy Center in Valencia and um, it's, a ther it's a huge therapy center where we do uh, TMS, which is um, very similar to electrical shock therapy, but it's less, um, it's a little bit less evasive. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm also doing therapy there as well, um, creating content and trying to empower women in our in our community mm -hmm. for them to feel very empowered and know that you know struggling and suf uh, suffering in silence is not an exception, and that we all have choices for sure. So, it's a little bit about my background do have a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's degree in counseling mm -hmm. and currently in a PhD program of clinical psych so I am wrapping good. that up very intense but I'm very grateful Absolutely. Um, very grateful for today and I'm very grateful for anyone that has been following with me through my journey absolutely wow that's amazing um, I love that you first of all you are a mom Yes. A single mom, a yes. little boy. Um, you have the culture, you have the background, the upbringing, the um, you know being an immigrant coming here with yes. your family. So you 100% understand the growing up process, the getting married process, and and then afterwards sometimes things don't work out and Absolutely. the whole divorce and uh, coping with uh, with that with your parents and with and your yes. loved ones. And um, I think it's incredible that you can help Armenian moms and, and even Armenian ladies who are not yet moms but are going through... Future moms. Yes, yeah. future moms or even just they're, they're struggling with um, some issues mentally, emotionally with their spouse or even with their parents or, or other loved ones. Um, and you can really, really wrap your head around all of that through experience. Yes. Um, so, you know, as women, we'll go to Trader Joe's, we'll pick up some cheese and wine, and we'll come over to our girlfriend's house and we'll have therapy, <laughs> you know, and yes. um, with cocktails or wine, and it feels amazing. And we've all done that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that was the cheapest <laughs> therapy. Uh -huh. Or and, shopping. Right, <laughs> that too. Just in your own mind, shopping uh -huh. around, it feels so good. But um, you, you have experienced that, and everyone who's watching, if you're a, a young lady or a little bit older, you've gone through that in your life. What's, what's it like for you just being a woman and a person and a friend mm -hmm. and then being a professional and yeah. being a therapist to your friends just as you, <laughs> Edith, and then, and then you as a professional, mm -hmm. uh, someone who can really give them some profound advice and right. steps to help them get through some very difficult times. 
I love that question. I've yeah. never been asked that question. <laughs> and I think that's something that I've kind of been reflecting back on only mm -hmm. because, and I'm going to be very transparent, I have lost so many friends due to my career path. Mm -hmm. Because at a lot of times I did notice that my friends, um, even, you know, certain relatives were struggling. And so I took that edit out and I replaced it with therapy edit but at times I noticed that it's not what's needed um, and so I ruined a lot of relationships not maliciously vindictively or consciously but subconsciously when you are trained for several years mm -hmm. you can't be, check out of that it's really 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 yeah. hard to check out because mm -hmm. that you know obviously empathy I've always had I've been I'm naturally an empathetic person but I think it was so hard to separate myself from the therapist yeah. to just being me mm -hmm. because I always felt the need to fix things to right. reach out if right. you know as you said going over and having wine with a friend and if they would be bawling crying because a husband said something immediately I would want to rescue and give advice mm -hmm. not being mindful that my advice is going to do the contrary it's not going to be as helpful right. and people need oh, to reach that yeah so mm -hmm. um, that for sure I am very mindful of now mm -hmm. so when I do get asked what should I do I always ask that question back I don't know what should you do mm -hmm. instead of saying oh you should you know this is what I think even though like in the back of my mind I do have answers and I know they're gonna benefit from it but right. for some reason I found it you know ruining my relationships and it really has right so yeah. now I have you know maybe about five five or six good friends that I'm in communication with but that therapist is not present at any time oh, wow. like I've, I've learned to separate myself wow. so it was hard and it's been hard yeah. it's been hard and I think career takes over your life mm -hmm. it takes over you as a person mm -hmm. and this is something that I practice a lot and I could just give you a brief example if you if you want to hear mm -hmm. I think it's super super interesting I had a person come to me um, who who was a teacher mm -hmm. and um, was not very comfortable um, going out and um, just high anxiety around people in general. Okay. So, um, and I kind of dug deep and tried to figure out what that anxiety was about and it was really about control. And so what I understood was, and I brought that, this up in conversation, that I think the teacher mm -hmm. side is controlling your relationship patterns and the way you live because teachers are very much in control. Mm -hmm. So I asked a very interesting question of, okay, let's just say if you go out to a grocery store, how do you visualize that? She said, well, you know, I think the first thing I would want to do is put everybody in rows, lined up. <laughs> like you line yeah. up here, you line up there, everything in color coordination. And that's when I figured out, oh my God, like your career does take over. Right. You right. know, so you have to be so connected with yourself. It's super important. And it doesn't have to be a career. You could be a mom mm -hmm. and have your mom take over your relationship with your spouse because mm -hmm. then now you're mothering your husband. Right, right. So you have to be very mindful of these things. And that's, I, I honestly learned it the hard way. And I've done so much research, personal research. I'm like, oh, wow, that really does make sense. Yeah. Even for men. Wow. Father figure, therefore, I have to be overprotective and father figure to my wife. Right. But on the contrary, your wife has a father. Your wife needs a husband. Mm -hmm. And that's where things get lost in translation. Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>
do certain things because yeah. we want you to be happy and as parents and they say you have to do this in order to be happy mm -hmm. so that's expectation mm -hmm. um, you know they think and it's not always the case and I can vouch for that just because you think you want your kids to get married that doesn't mean that that's gonna equal happiness or having children is gonna equal happiness yes. Um, so let's talk about expectation versus reality when it comes to all of that because yeah. I think it's going to be very eye-opening for everybody. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so there's two ways with that. Um, a lot of that has to do with learned behavior. Mm -hmm. So we see, we mimic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of going back to what you said, traditions and values and morals that are brought from Yerevan to here, I think those are very much in our culture and mm -hmm. it's learned behavior. Um, and I think millennials have been doing such a good job carrying out that tradition. Yes. However, yeah. however, mm -hmm. sometimes that does not benefit our children because they are growing up in a t completely different country. Mm -hmm. Well, culture is different, acceptance is different, mm -hmm. and expectations are different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think expectations for Armenians are you either do it or you don't. Right. But it's mostly you have to. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> there is no alternative. But in America, there is a gray area. Mm -hmm. It's not all or nothing thinking. It's right. black, gray, and white. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a huge cultural difference. And I think that's why a lot of children, our children, this is where they struggle. Because we're trying to apply our expectations onto them where outside they're being exposed to different types of expectations. Right. So that's where the controversy comes in and your kid's like, well, you know, what is right and what is wrong? So that's where you come in and you have to kind of, I think, really, I think it's really important for children to have their own identity. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for them to learn values and morals, but not be pressured that this is what our culture expects of you. Mm -hmm. Of course, our culture is so beautiful, and mm -hmm. I think we have such great morals and values, right. but pushing that on a child here is kind of like stealing an identity. Right, right. Right? And that's just a personal belief. I know I'm going to get a lot of women saying, No, that I agree with no that. That makes no sense. You, um, as a parent, um, even me, I'm I'm another generation, right? Okay, I have two young young girls, but our parents pushing that upon us, even even going to school, right? Yes, of course, it's great to get an education. Do you yes. absolutely have to? No, no. But um, as far as the whole marriage thing goes, I think there's so much pressure to get married. Especially like, okay, 25, 26, hello, you have time. Maybe yeah. you can push it to 30. Of course. You know, but but that constant, you know, why aren't you settling down or finding someone? Or if you did find someone, why aren't you engaged to them? And after you're engaged, why don't you get married? And it's just like, I feel like maybe if we just slowed down a little bit and really gave our children some space to figure things out, yes. I think maybe the divorce rates would go down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I think you know, you're just, onto something. Yeah, yeah. I just... I just feel for them because it's like, oh, I have to get married because my parents want me to have have a child so they can have a grandchild. And um, yeah. I'm like, yes, of course, it's wonderful to be a grandparent. I see that myself. But if it doesn't happen, it's okay. Yeah. And I think that's the big <laughs> word yeah. right there, that it is okay. I mean, I yeah. have a lot of, um, I have a lot of people that are in my life right now that are not married and they're in their late 30s. Mm -hmm. And here's the interesting thing that I think we're coming around to accepting that marriage at a later age is okay nowadays, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I think the shame and the guilt is not leaving right. <laughs> that whole um, theory. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of parents are like, okay, you know, but at the same time, kids that are constantly and I'm not in your saying, ear. in your ear, yeah. and, and it hurts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think identity definitely gets disheveled and you get thrown yes. out and you start going in zigzags yes. instead of like a straight line of, okay, you know, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to structure my life. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very hard. But I, again, I have to say, I think Armenians are coming around and mm -hmm. that pressure is less and less, but that doesn't mean the verbal use, abuse isn't present. Right, of Halaka. course. Yes. So we, yes. we have to really be mindful of that, that, right. you know, words are more hurtful and they stay longer. Yes. In fact, they don't leave. Right, right, right. 
and it could be it could it, it's not just you know um, getting married or not getting married um, my parents not my parents I'm saying right a person will say oh my parents really wanted me to be a um, a pharmacist mm -hmm. but I ended up becoming a musician mm -hmm. I mean when parents oppress these mm -hmm. natural feelings and and talents and other desires right. for their kids because you want them to be a pharmacist or a doctor yes. or a lawyer yes and I am I have to definitely agree with you I am yeah. noticing that a lot but here's my theory on that it's overcompensation mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is you know, I'm, I'm very big on conscious parenting. Mm -hmm. I think that I don't, first of all, I do not believe in discipline. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> can you, can you elaborate and on that? I'm going to get so much um, backlash on this and I'm okay with that mm -hmm. because I have had seminars about this. Mm -hmm. I've had meetings about this and I've been shut down and I'm totally okay with that. I never disciplined my child. In fact, I, I'm a big believer on connecting before correcting. Okay. okay. So give me an example of that. So if you are, try, let's just say if you are trying to teach, not discipline, but if you're trying to teach your, your child a certain skill set, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, setting the table, mm -hmm. um, a lot of parents have a hard time doing that because they're, you know, my child is lazy or they don't know how to do it or they don't want to do it. I get that. I'll just that. do it myself. I'll just do it yeah. myself type of theory, but are you connecting with your child before trying to correct them or teach them? Mm. Because when you connect to your child on a deeper emotional level, they grow respect mm -hmm. and they want to listen to you because of your soft tone and your beautiful approach. Mm -hmm. But if you're like the Matilda, Mrs. Trunchbull, and you're like, I'm big, you're small. I'm smart, you're stupid, and that yeah. kind of tone, the ego kicks in. I don't right. care what you want to say. Even yeah. a child, I mean, children are naturally very egocentric mm -hmm. because their cognitive beliefs that, ev you know, people have feelings and you're human and oh, so you you mean to tell me your feelings are going to get hurt doesn't kick in until, until later. later. Yes. So when you're yeah. trying to discipline and spank and do all these things and you're getting defiance, you want to connect before you correct. Right. So that's why I'm a big believer in connecting before correcting. So right. that's why discipline is a harsh word. So kind of circling back to what you're saying, I want my child to be a pharmacist or doctor. A lot of times parents are trying to overcompensate things that they didn't have growing up. Yes. Okay. I want you to better have a better life correct. than I did. So, so therefore you need to make correct. a lot of money. Correct. Right, right. So an example would be my father or my mother never gave me hugs and kisses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mm, smooch you all my life. But that mm -hmm. child grows up feeling smothered. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then when that doesn't happen so extreme, from a partner, right? it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying. There's no yeah. gray area in our yeah. culture. Yeah. It's all or nothing thinking usually. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful. And this is where conscious parenting kicks in. Um, it's not that we're very lazy affair type of parenting where if your kid throws a rock at you, you're going to be like, apres. Yeah. No, not that type. But dropping down to their level, setting a time to conversate, not uh, approaching them in public, dissing them and sp like, I don't believe in that aggression. Right, I believe in, wow, like you did, you just threw a rock at me. But in true, in check out arvum comet, in check out China, tsar, in chess, azgum. Like how different that is versus. Mm -hmm you know, cussing in Armenian or profanity or like harshful language. Yeah. That's going to make them do more. Or just yelling or just, just or just yelling, uh, exploding yeah. on them at that moment. And this right. is why psychology is not, it's starting to get more acceptance, but this is why we've had such negative feedback. Like people don't believe in me as a psychotherapist because how can you approach a child that throws a rock at you so smoothly, mm -hmm. but how can you not? Right. 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 So, um, Overcompensating can also mean um, I was abused, therefore, if they throw a rock at me, I'm not going to say anything. Right, so it right. goes both ways. And parenting is hard. This is why they say take parenting classes before you become a parent. Right, right. Because there's just so much to know mm -hmm. and everything is always rushed under, you know, uh, brushed under the rug. Like, oh, right. we, don't, we don't need to know these things. But this is why we have so many narcissists. Yeah. This is why we have so many children who are growing up narcissists, borderlines, mm -hmm. with different types of personality disorder, disorders because they're not getting the proper acknowledgement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, proper attention, the mm -hmm, love. Mm -hmm. So not, you know, 
or trying to analyze what happened yes. five or ten or twenty years ago that brought them to this place yes. right now. Yeah, right, right. And the kids remember things. Of course, they remember things. It yeah. is imprinted in their skin, and mm -hmm. so even if they're not going to tell you, or there's a thing called a subconscious mind. So even if there are things that you don't register, it's still in your brain, and mm -hmm. your behaviors are gonna show that there's something's not present, something's off. Right, right. So or something's triggering that. Right. Yeah, so parenting exactly. is a big deal, and I take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. Thus being the reason why I have a page like I have. Right. Um, why I am trying to teach and educate, not because I know better. No, I don't know better because every year my child has a different personality and is mm -hmm. developing. Mm -hmm. I mean, according to Eric Erickson, every year your child is different. Mm -hmm. If you look at the developmental stages, at times I'm like, wait, my son isn't how he was last year. He's more of an introvert. Last year he was all about going outside and jumping on walls. Now I have to beg him to get him out of the house because mm -hmm. his personality is changing. Mm -hmm. so being also aware of those things is right. really important. Right, absolutely. Wow, there's so much to discuss. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I know. I love it. It's so interesting. I feel like we could be here for hours talking about yeah. parenting and about uh, just us as humans and yes. um, you know with our partners and this everything like that. This is the like beauty that. of psychology. Yes, I, I love it. It's just it's like taking a class. There's yeah. so much for me to learn and for our viewers to learn. Absolutely. Um, so we had spoken. Um, uh, briefly about you know what what kind of things we're both interested in, in discussing um, and let me just tell you actually all, for the record um, you and I went to high school yes. and we found each other on Instagram yes. through a mutual friend yes and I love that I'm finding people and I'm reconnecting with classmates and people that are oh acquaintances or friends of friends uh -huh. I love seeing people like you uh, a man a woman doesn't matter I just want yeah. to see people like you who are professionals who are doing something great yeah greater than what we had done in the past right right so let's uh get into a very um important topic for me something i really love to bring to light because i feel and i hear from people from women that it's happening or it has happened or they're currently going through it and it's so hard and that is women who are suffering in silence when it comes to their emotions and their mm. mental health and even things that they're experiencing that they don't even have a label for or mm. they don't even know that this is what they're going yeah. through. Uh, what type of patients or clients do you see when it comes to that? There definitely is and I think it's um, the shame and the guilt factor is present with a lot of women in reference to getting help mm -hmm. but I think it's cultural for a lot of women mm -hmm. and I can kind of circle back on my personal experience before I get into details because I obviously want the audience to kind of connect with what I'm trying to say. I had postpartum after my son and it was really bad mm -hmm. um, for about six months non-stop anxiety, non-stop depression, dis disconnection. It was just right. so, 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 so hard. Mm -hmm. And I would approach, I would approach friends and certain family members, but I would get such guilt. So mm -hmm. comments like, oops, sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> comments like, um, just clean your house, things would get better. Go get, your, go get your eyebrows done, things will get better. Go get yeah. your hair dyed, things will get better. Dress yeah. up your kid, uh, things will get better. Mm -hmm. um, oh, when I had a kid, I was so excited. I used to walk around with my clothes and my fancy you know, jewelry, and it felt so good. And I kept questioning myself, Ostvatsim, what is wrong with me? Yeah. Why can all these women they be okay? Everything? Yeah, right. what is happening with me? So. That's shame, that's mm -hmm. guilt. Of course, they're not telling you that there's something wrong with you. Well, some did, but that's the reason why you don't wanna go and get help because mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's, it's hard because then you're looked at as a crazy person. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misconception about medicine too. The stigma, if you take medicine, that means you're a psycho. If you take medicine, that means you're ill. That means you're sick. And yeah. it's needed. To help them balance to help them back. And they don't have to be on it for the rest of their life. That's what they're not exactly. Exactly. You don't have to be yeah. on antidepressants forever. I was on antidepressants for mm -hmm. about two, 
two weeks mm -hmm. because um, it helped with therapy. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't present. My mind, I had such um, racing thoughts. It was that really, you really concentrate on therapy. I couldn't. Correct. Right. It was interrupting my therapy, and my therapist mm -hmm. would give me assignments, check on them. So it was really hard. But once I, you know, medicine really helps. Right. put things into perspective and it brings you back to the present mm -hmm. so there's no shame around it Ooh, nobody needs to know this is the problem with a lot of women that are struggling yeah. with with these dilemmas right they want to connect so much right. Christine that they go to the wrong people right. and I talked about this on a live I don't know if you watched a few days ago I did talk about boundaries mm. so what that means is um, you have to compartmentalize the people who are in your life mm -hmm. what I mean by that and this is great info that anybody from this can take away you put everybody in a bowl anybody who's in your life Life. like visualize everybody that's in your life in a bowl and I want you to visualize a white wall with rows just rows like boxes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're gonna put titles on top empathy friendship fun love sympathy cry whatever topics you want to cry mm -hmm. and you're gonna put each and every single person that's in a bowl into those compartments yeah so if you have Jacqueline, Janie, and Joe in f the fun box. Mm -hmm. You cannot go to Jacqueline, Janie, and Joe if you're crying and you're d distressed mm -hmm. because they don't know how to approach that. Right, or, t or handle that information. Correct. Right, right. But who's in the empathy box? My therapist, my mother, and my sister. Mm -hmm. Can I go to them for empathy? Yes, I can because they would understand my pain. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't judge me or shame me. Mm -hmm. But if I go to Jacqueline, Janie, and Joe, they're gonna be like, oh my God, just get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have fun. I hated that so much. Right? Just get over it. Oh my God. Just get over it. Let's mm -hmm. have fun. Mm -hmm. So you have to be so mindful of right. um, um het karas um het karas. Yes. Word yeah. es ko emotionele ko filinele arta haitum. I am shut kare vora because you're gonna get shut down. Marti kes kstorats nen. Marti kes zer kar nen. Marti kovra kati zahan. You have to be so mindful. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. When women are suffering in silence, it's awful. But all you have to do is identify just one person who would get you, mm -hmm. who's not gonna shut you down. If you don't wanna go to a therapist, that is a personal choice. I respect that. Nobody needs to be forced into that. But to protect course. yourself. Right, of Because it feels worse for us when you'll get over it. You know, men can learn God, men can learn get a hand. Ayo, hysteric, good to know. I'm hard to watch me balance. Yeah, how did we handle it? And you can't. Well, maybe you didn't even know you had it at that Back time. Back then, you didn't. This, right. this is one of the topics that I talked about at Pan Armenia. Yeah, people were saying things like. My mom and I are not just very much not in an upper high state. No, we're in two of them. High state in mental health. Thousands of people are not in the fact that we are not in the fact that we are not in yeah. We would have no light for like two, three days. I literally learned the alphabet underneath candle lights. Mm -hmm. I did my homework underneath candles, mm -hmm. but we were happy. But that's because we didn't know what these symptoms were. Mm -hmm. And I think the more you know it, the more mindful you are of it. Yeah, you're so, like, oh, wait, I, uh, that sounds familiar. I think I went through yeah, that at some point. For sure. Right. So this is kind of off topic, but right. circling back to women suffering in silence, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a choice. We have choices. So mm -hmm. if you mean, you know, if even if it means going by the freeway and ho holding up a cardboard that says, help me, I'm homeless, that's a choice. Mm -hmm. You have choices mm -hmm. and you have rights. Mm -hmm. So if you're suffering in silence and you feel okay with that, that's okay. But if you feel like you need help, you have a choice to get help. And there's definitely resources. Of course. No even resources for not paying, uh, uh, I mean, free yeah. resources. Yes. Right. And I have a, a resource uh, section on my page numbers to all kinds of hotlines. Mm -hmm. I have friends who do therapy for free mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's such a good opportunity. So there definitely is resources to help right. even men. The topic is not just women, like right. overall for kids, families. Yeah. You just have to reach out and speak up and know yes. that you know, you're know you worth being happy and you are you definitely have the worth for abundance and happiness and all kinds of wonderful things that life has to provide. Absolutely. We're gonna have your name on the bottom uh, uh, right next to you and we'll have your Instagram handle if that's okay yeah. people can visit that that are watching your Instagram okay, you have a lot of resources on there you're always doing lives you're always offering always. Uh, advice and yes. help and things like that so it, there's so much that you can 
to provide. And if you can't be their therapist, you can refer them or have Absolutely. them find one, no problem. Um, I definitely want to mention, um, talk about a little bit about, about men as well. Um, uh, I feel like um, there's always, always, as a provider, as the breadwinner, as the bringing home the bacon situation and, and completely have, putting this guard and umbrella over your family as a man, yeah. uh, whether it's just to your partner or to your um, you know, significant other and children when they come about, there's so much pressure on a man yes. to perform and even like go beyond performance, right. like just go above and beyond to provide because yes. the wife can stay home, but the husband cannot yeah. like, in our culture. I just feel like uh, I want to acknowledge that that we understand that a lot of men are going through a lot of anxiety, <laughs> panic attacks, depression, mm -hmm. pressure to perform, to do really well um, for their uh, family and to just kind of be that shining mm -hmm. beacon of light kind of thing. Um, and a lot of them, you know, I feel like have this loneliness as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially yes. after children. Yes, men also yeah. experience postpartum. Yes, by the way. Yes, it's not the fact of yeah, just because they haven't given birth, that doesn't mean they don't experience it. So basically, you guys, postpartum means a change, mm -hmm. and it's not change only in the body, but it's change in life. Mm -hmm. You're now adjusting to this new life. Mm -hmm. You are grieving over a loss of yourself right right i was a single guy and i just got married what's happened i'm a dad now mm -hmm. the responsibility and the like overwhelming feeling of being a provider is super stressful and i think that's one of the things that's not really addressed as much because we have all these beautiful pages of women and trying to help women and help children but they're what about men? Yeah, they're like, well, what about me? I have yet to see, right. right. I have and yet even if they won't see. say it out loud, yeah. they're thinking it. Of course they are. Yeah. Of course they are. Yeah. I mean, I can go off um, information about my own father as a mm -hmm. human being, as a, as a provider, and the experiences that he has of losing a mother, mm -hmm. losing a father, and then a brother, mm -hmm. right? And a sister at a young age. So much grief. And then, wow. you know, having a daughter come back home who is now divorced, mm -hmm. right? The, the depression and the withdrawals and the sadness, but those things aren't approached even in, you know, our, our parents' generation, even right. like baby boomers, as we call them, mm -hmm. or, you know, our, the, the silent generation, our mm -hmm. grandparents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, the it, silent generation. The silent generation, right. right? It does not matter. People are people, men are, men have emotions. In fact, men have more. <laughs> it's just not talked about. So um, a man could be depressed, but there's such a stigma of a man speaking up. Oh, of boys course. don't cry. Yeah. That statement is used a lot. Ugh, and I've seen yeah. that used on my son at a previous school that he was attending. And but it's You know, uh, you know, you can't cry. A man doesn't have to be built from um, having no emotions. A man's built from having emotions. Sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I think yeah. this is so beautiful. And um, yeah, I just got goosebumps. But this is why these conversations need to happen. Yeah. Because, I, you know, each time that I have talked about this, th this yeah. hit home with at least one woman in the yeah. room. And oh, they of course, bawled. a brother, a, br a yeah, father. a father figure. Right. And I think we, as women, we want to see our dads cry. We need to see our dads cry. Because mm -hmm. then it makes us feel like more you know, more human. Yeah. And we're able to kind of mimic that in the relationship that we want from a man. Right, I think right. it's super important right, for absolutely. a father to show emotion. Right. And I, I think growing up, my father was very emotional, mm -hmm. even though like um, crying doesn't have to be the ultimate emotion of I'm sad, there's right. different ways, but I'm so grateful that I witnessed all of that. Yeah. Because then I was, you know, I think it was easier to kind of identify humans. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's this is a really triggering topic i think yeah. for a lot of women yeah but i do know that man does 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 not you know crying does not define yes i think you have to be such a strong person 
to constantly hold things inside of you, especially as yeah. a man, because you're the backbone, you're the, yeah. you know, macho, tough guy, dad, brother, yeah. Yeah. boppy, husband, whatever it is. Yeah. And then when you just kind of let yourself go, even in, even by yourself, yeah. maybe you're just driving and you're thinking and you want to yeah. cry, just cry and just right. like, feel better. And then if you cry in front of your wife or your daughter, I mean, yeah, it's a little, you know, because it's your dad, but then you see them and you're like, oh, you know, like I want yeah. him to release that yeah. because it's so much pressure. It feels good to see it. Yeah. Be it's, it's a form of acknowledgement too. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. you're, when you see your parent always tough. Yeah. What does that teach? Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can be weak just for a few minutes. It's okay. You can it is okay. show that. And I want to... Not that I want to see it, but I, if I see it, I'm gonna. It's okay to want to see it. Yeah, I think some women are craving that. Yeah, it's okay to want to see that. It, yeah. it's normal to want your dad to break down. Mm -hmm. I think it's normal to want to have your husband break down. Right. And that's what you know. I was I was having such a good conversation with one of my friends who's a um, anesthesiologist, mm -hmm. and we were talking about like dads and how mm -hmm. like important it is for dads to also be emotional. I mean, like, right. you know. Going back to the topic of coming back mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. with two kids. Right, right. That topic for a f like, I think the, the da a lot of dads can't even wrap their minds around it. And they use the term or something like that. It's yeah. such a Oof. Ooh, dramatic and yeah. strong term. But that's yeah. how, str I mean, from that, you can already tell how emotional they are. Right, right, right. Like, church has been broken down right. or burned down and yeah. it's like wow that's some powerful stuff so going you know circling back to emotions it doesn't always have to be crying but mm -hmm. you can be mindful and understand like verbal emotions like the right, words have meaning um i'll give my uh, insight as, as far as a personal my personal experience but like if you had to give advice to a mother who's our, our mother's generation and, and their child just went through a divorce, kids or no kids, doesn't matter. Right. They, they have a failed marriage, something broke, mm -hmm. something ceased to exist or failed, and um, it happened. And it doesn't mean fail equals it's terrible, it's awful, right. but it just didn't work out. And maybe, you know, a marriage can be a blessing and it could be a curse. Yep. So I. I would want, what would you say to that mom that's having to have their child come back home? Sometimes I'm not a big believer in words. I'm a believer in verbal uh, body language. Mm -hmm. And the best advice I can give is just a hug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold your kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just hold your kid. Just, you know, you open the door, you see your kid, just hold your kid. Mm -hmm. Have them put their head on your shoulder and mm -hmm. you can kiss the forehead or the head and just give a nice, warm, welcoming hug. Yeah, that but they're itself, back. It's yeah. louder than words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're, work if you're looking for words, mm -hmm. that things are going to be okay. Yeah, Things this isn't work the end-all be-all. It's not. Yeah, Life continues and everything has a reason. Everything has a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, my purpose was to do this mm -hmm. after my divorce. Mm -hmm. And you have to find your purpose. You have to be... I don't like a victim chair. Mm -hmm. It's ugly. Um, it's not colorful. It's not pretty. Mm -hmm. There's no designs on it. I think a victim chair is... Uh, not attractive mm -hmm. so if you are placed in a position of you know i have to leave my wife or husband or whatever the case might be get out of that victim chair and find your purpose why did this happen mm -hmm. and if there's no why and you don't know the why then you know move on find how you can inspire others with your words and your knowledge and your experience exactly. find a purpose but don't sit and victimize yourself and talk about how bad this experience has been, how awful it is, and mm -hmm. give me attention, and oh my goodness, this, no. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Same goes for parenting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they tell you, like, oh, I'll help you out. Yes, sometimes they do, but it's so much work on yourself. It is. Your, um, te your children teach you about yourself. Right. 
they bring out the best in you and they bring out the, the worst, worst in you, you. Yeah, and absolutely. you have to pick how to handle it. Yes. We talked about many things. Um, I wish we had a little bit more time. Maybe we can come back to this topic because there's yes. so much more to talk about as far <laughs> yes, as there is. Uh, just parenting. There's you know? so much detail. Yeah. And it's not just, oh, how to parent your child. Mm. No, it, what I really wanted to get into was um, how you're going to feel as a human, as a person, a woman or a man, after you have that child, right. what's, what's left over here? What are you feeling here? Which right. is something I struggled with so much because I thought I had two kids. Like, yeah. okay, heto. Parenting or yeah. not. Yeah. And this is for everybody out there. Parenting yeah. or not. Parent or not. Pregnant or not. In a relationship or not. Single or not. Mm -hmm. You have to try to find yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to. Absolutely. You have to learn about yourself. You have to study your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You have to study your non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line? Mm -hmm. Make a kiss on Harguma. Okay. Kanye mm -hmm. How much are you are, are you willing to take? Right. That's it. I'm okay with it. You have to find your non-negotiables. You have to look after your boundaries. You have to protect your heart. Mm -hmm. You have to protect your soul, your being. Mm -hmm. Because Ajk Pakis, uh, mm -hmm. you're gonna manifest more negative. Mm -hmm. So get a good idea of who you are and what you want. Parent right. or not, got to me. Because that's gonna ultimately carry out through your marriage and your relationship. Ooh, Absolutely. It's, it's how you're gonna be treated. How you see yourself is how people are going to treat you. Right, right. right. And that's right. one of the things I didn't realize until you know, because everything was fine and yep. uh, I was doing, you know, work here, work there, trying to figure out what I want to do, you know, how I see myself for the next 5, 10, 20 years, whatever, what career do I want to get into after two kids? Mm -hmm. I'm 30, you know, I had my, my second one when I was 30 and then it just kind of, like, it just, it was like this letting air out of a balloon. I don't know, I just kind of depleted and I was like, well, what am I going to do now? I felt so, like, like I just didn't identity even identity crisis. Yeah, a huge totally. identity crisis. And that is what Eric Erickson talks about. If anybody mm -hmm. wants to research him, mm -hmm. he's literally the father. Everybody thinks it's Freud. Mm -hmm. There's more fathers in psychology other than Sigmund Freud. Mm -hmm. And Eric Erickson is Maslow. His hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But Eric Erickson talks about that. It's mm -hmm. human development and our identity crisis stem from age 13 to later on, like age 20s. Mm -hmm. And if during that time your identity is not nurtured properly you're gonna have an identity crisis when you're 35. it's been a pleasure thank, thank you, you again and everyone who joined in i just wanted to give a quick little message um thank you for inviting me into your homes especially during this time of um uh, world crisis as they call it um I hope that you guys are taking it a little bit easier than all of the things on the media and all of the Things that might be scaring you or putting you in a, in a mental state of, of um, you know, fearing the unknown. So I hope that you can take it easy and you can use this time to be with your loved ones. I hope that you're all, you're all healthy and happy and that we can all be together again soon. Hopefully in the summer because that's the best time to be with your family and birthdays and parties and things like that. So hopefully we can get through this and um, I hope that I provided uh, a nice um, hour of... Uh, interesting topic for your, you to um, indulge in. Uh, thank you and till next time. Mm -hmm.